Hey guys, it's Angry Admin here, and today we are continue with building our home lab. I received few messages about the DNS on the Photon VM, and some users are not happy how it works. So I decided to spin up another VM and a Windows DC domain controller with DNS. So let's have a look how to do it. First of all, we need to get the ISO. You can get the ISO from Microsoft website Evolution Copy and we are going to upload that ISO to the data store. So we click on the, our storage and our local data store. We go to browse, data store browse and upload. Go to upload and we highlight the ISO here. Now it will take a few moments to upload ISO and you see the progress bar over here. So I will speed up that video and I will talk to you once that process is finished. Okay, and we're back. So we see the ISO has been uploaded. So you just highlight this one and close. Now, let's create our VM. So we go to create a VM create a new virtual machine, click next. Let's put a name. Now we leave compatibility as ESX 7.0. Guest OS family will be a Windows and my ISO is a server 2022. Let's click next. Storage, as I have only local storage, there's nothing to choose from. So click next. And now we are going to attach our ISO. So we choose data store. Again, just sorry. So we just choose from this data store. And we choose our ISO. Select. Make sure it's connected. I connect on start. Click next. And finish. So in the recent task, we can see that VM has been created, which is super. But obviously, Windows hasn't been installed yet. We need to power on that VM and that VM should power on from the ISO and installation process should start. Let's have a look. Let's click on the console. Let's click here, press any key to start from the CD and the Windows installation process will start. Um, it's very straightforward, it's almost unattended. So I will speed up the video and I will stop all the parts like here once we have to choose um, an options. And click next. And we do the install now. And as you can see, we can choose what version we, we want. Now the desktop experience, it means it has a GUI installed. If we go for this or, or data center itself, it would be a core version. Core version, you don't have any GUI, you have only PowerShell modules. So we go for a data center um, desktop experience, we click next. You have to accept the terms and conditions. And we are going for the installation. We use this drive. And now start to copying files and installing the system. So again, I will speed up the video now and I will talk to you once that operation is finished. So we are now on the phase of customizing settings. So user name will be administrator. I need to just put a password and confirm it. And obviously I misspell it. Okay, and let's click finish. 
Okay, to log it, we have to press Ctrl R Delete, but obviously we cannot press uh, on the keyboard. Uh, we can, but it won't give the effect you expect to. So you go into Actions, and then you go to Guest OS, Send Keys, and Alt Ctrl Delete. And we put a password. And I was not typing, yes. Right. Okay, and we logged into the server, um, but let's do something else before we go ahead. So let's do action and let's open that in the remote console that will give you me more uh, flexibility uh, so i have my machine over here so this is my esxi house and you see the both uh, vms over here and okay that way i have a control over uh, over virtual machines uh, in my left hand side i don't need to go and log in to the host uh, directly uh, i can access my vms from this pane that's only that, that, that that's the reason why i did it oh, let's set up the network now so we go for a network and the adapter settings and we'll see what ip address uh, uh, does it have it it does not have any uh, it has uh, it has obtained automatically but i want to use the uh, specific address uh, which is 192168 uh -huh. which is 192.168.154 and the subnet mask is 24 and the gateway is 192.168.1254 and now as a for dns we we're using the loopback address, uh, which is one two seven zero zero one, and alternative again it will call itself. It's exactly the same thing. So let's click OK and close, and let's check. What IPs does it have it? And there's the IP which we set up is this one. It's 192.168.154. Okay, and let's check if we can access that from my um, home uh, laptop. So let's ping it. 192.168.154. And it's pingable which is very good. Now we can continue and we can install our roles. And one, one more thing uh, before we go ahead with installing the DNS um, uh, roles. Uh, let's close those. Uh, we click to our local server and we will go ahead and change the name of that computer. And we want this to be our domain controller like this. And we click OK. And this will require a reboot. So as you can see, you must restart your computer to apply those changes. OK. Close and restart now. Okay, and we are back, and again, we need to log in. So to log in, we can see that this is the key to send the alt control delete. Uh, type in password. And now we will configure our DNS server. Okay, so now it's time to add roles and features. So let's click on the add roles and features. and click next role based or feature based installation that one now this is our controller so yes now we need to choose 
Active Directory services and of course DNS server. And now click next, click next, 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 and install. It will take a while again, so let me speed up the video for you. Okay, and as we can see, the installation has finished. So now the next step is to promote the server to a domain controller. So just click on that link and add a new forest. It's a new domain. And obviously our domain, my domain will be angrysysops.com. Uh, but feel free to name as you pleased. Click next. Now we need to create a password. And the password don't match, just two seconds. And click next. Uh, we are not going to create DNS delegation. We leave as it is. The default net NetBIOS, we leave as it is. We click next. You can change now destination for your database folder or log uh, files, but I will leave as everything as a default. Click next. Now you see that view script uh, that will shows you a PowerShell script, uh, which you can use um, to automate future deployments. Click next. And now click install. And again, it might take a few moments. So I will speed up the video. The one thing um, to know is that installation will require reboot. Okay, and we are back after after the installation. So let's log in again. And as you can see now, you see the angry sysops slash administrator, which means we are joined the domain. So uh, let's put a password. Okay, so now we need to create our DNS entry. So let's head to the tools and let's click on the DNS. And you can see our DNS here. And there's a forward lookup zone. And we see we have our zone here. This is an entry already for our uh, DC. What I want to do, I want to create a reverse lookup zone for our uh, domain as well. So let's click a new zone, a primary zone, yes, uh, to all DNS. Um, so by default, and IPv4, and our network is 192.168.1. And we click next, and we leave that by default and we click finish. So now we can create our records. So let's head over to forward lookup zone, angrysysops.com and we right click on it and do the new host A or AAAA record. And the first record will be our ESXi host. So it's a ACO ESX and 001. And IP of that is 192.168.1.101. And I will create a PTR pointer record as well. Click Add. 
and another host ACO ESX and 002 and the IP was 192.168.1.102 and same record for a vCenter, which we don't have yet, but we have it soon. And this was it. And it was 120, yeah. 120. Oh, it didn't copy. Uh, VCSA APS01 APS01 192.168.1.120 Okay, and we can see those records are here. Let's look at the reverse lookup zone. We have over here there as well and Let's test it. So I opened the command prompt on my local laptop. This is it from the local laptop and Let's have a look on uh, if that works. So let's put uh, the command ns lookup. And let's change the default um, server because that is now set up to uh, this Photon OS. But let's change to the Windows 192.168.154. And let's ask for our ESXi server, 192.168.1.101. And we see it worked. And now let's um, let's check by the name. And we can see it access. So this times out, it's my own network. Um, so you shouldn't have the timeout. But um, as you see, we got the result uh, after, after a few seconds. So let's check on the zero uh, two. And as you see, it was instant uh, return to us. Uh, that value. Now let's ask for a V center. Say APS01. Um, and we see it's returning the record and reverse. Same. So the last thing we need to do now is to point to our new DNS, our local PC. So we go for a network settings in our local PC and change adapter settings and active one, which is this one. We right click on it, go to properties and the IPv4 properties and we change to our new DNS, which is that one. As an alternative DNS, I will leave my Photon OS DNS. And click OK. And that's it, guys. So in the next video, I promise you, next video, we will install our vCenter server. Okay? I hope that was informative. I hope you can follow my steps. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video in the comment section or chat to me over the Twitter. Uh, it's at angry sysops. Um, what else? Join my knowledge base forum group on Facebook and read my blog angrysysops.com. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.